Hi everyone, welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 10 Minutes where I explain a biological technique in less than 10 minutes or so. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button. Why are you waiting for? Now, today's installment, we're going to talk about fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching experiment. It's a good biological technique which has versatile use. So, fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching, or in short FRAP, is majorly used to study molecular dynamics. So let's quickly review the application of FRAP in biological research. So FRAP could be used to study membrane fluidity or studying the mobility of a membrane protein. It can be also used to study cytoskeletal dynamics and dynamics of vesicular transport. Quantitative information about all these dynamic processes can be obtained using FRAP. So FRAP is very important for cell biologists. So we are going to talk about how FRAP works and then we are going to review some FRAP based experiments and how to interpret the data. But before that guys, if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe and hit that bell, icon, bell icon and please share my videos in social media. By the way, I'm also present in Unacademy. So if you want to join my course, use AP10 as a code that would give you 10% discount. So let's start. Let's take an example of membrane fluidity. So we know that membrane are fluid and all these phospholipids can either diffuse laterally or it could have a rotational motion or it could have flip-flop movement. So let's try to understand whether how we can detect or experimentally determine that these phospholipids are actually performing lateral movements. In order to do so, you need to take a cell in culture format and then we are going to label the lipids with fluorescently marked lipids. After incorporating the lipids inside the membrane, which would take some time, then all the membrane is fluorescently labeled, right? And at this situation, using a confocal microscope or a strong fluorescent microscope, we are going to bleach a portion of the membrane. So you can see the top view and now we introduce our laser. And this is a very high intensity laser which would bleach a portion of the membrane and all the fluorescence in that area would be lost. So the area would now look like this, a bleached region. You have to understand that if these phospholipids are not mobile, they are static, then this bleached region would be never recovered, right? But in other words, if they are dynamic, then this fluorescent bleach region would be recovered over time. So what scientists perform is like they track the fluorescent level over time after bleaching and that is known as a recovery phase. Let's say the membrane phospholipids are mobile and performing lateral movements. So after waiting for some time there would be recovery or gradual recovery of fluorescence because nearby phospholipids are performing lateral diffusions and coming to this bleached region. That's why the, bleach, the, the bleached region is now gaining again fluorescence, right? Now let's try to look at the data and try to interpret it. So the data comes out from the microscope as an intensity versus time data. So there is a certain amount of intensity level, level because the membrane was labeled by fluorescently labeled um, um, phospholipids. As a result, there is a baseline intensity. But whenever we expose this membrane with the high intensity laser right now, there would be a sharp drop in the fluorescent level, right? Because this is the bleaching phase, right? Where the photo bleaching is happening. So this phase is the photo bleaching. Now we have to wait. And if these membrane phospholipids are dynamic, then there would be gradual recovery. And this is how it is depicted. There is a gradual recovery and as a recovery, the fluorescence is regained or coming back, right? So let's see how quantitatively we can understand this data. Actually, this diffusion of the, the phospholipids would proceed in an ordered fashion. And assuming the beam which is bleaching is actually a Gaussian, having a Gaussian profile, then we can calculate the diffusion coefficient. The diffusion coefficient d would be r square by 4 td where td is the time for diffusion and r square is the radius of this uh, beam which was used for bleaching purpose. 
With that, it would give a quantitative measure about the diffusion coefficient. It would also give us an estimate of time that how much time it would require for re recovery, right? So let's try to understand this process in bit more details. So let's take another example. How to track the dynamic nature of a membrane protein? So let's say this red membrane protein over here is actually dynamic in nature. So it actually moves, right, in the membrane. So we can see from the side and the top view that this particular red protein is quite mobile inside the plasma membrane. It's not necessary that all membrane-bound protein need to be mobile, but some of the membrane-bound protein can be mobile. And in order to track their mobility, we can use that. Or we can ask the question that this particular protein is mobile or not. In order to do so, we need to tag the protein fluorescently. We need to make a recombinant protein that would express GFP or somehow label the protein with a fluorescent tag. Now the same protein can move, right? So if we bleach a certain region on the membrane and if the same protein can move here and there, then what would happen? Then there would be a initial dip in the fluorescence due to photo bleaching, but overall there would be a recovery profile over time, right? And that would tell us about the mobility of this particular protein, right? So here, after giving the laser, some amount of proteins here are bleached. You can see the proteins are faded out, right? Now, the proteins which are in the nearby location would eventually migrate and take the position of those proteins. As a result, overall fluorescence would be regained. So looking at the fluorescence recovery profile or calculating the diffusion coefficient, we can understand how dynamic a biological process is or we can understand the quantitative aspect of uh, dynamics of a protein or a membrane phospholipid. Let's take another example. Now we are going to ask that how vesicular transport can be studied using FRAP. So we know inside our cells there are microtubules which are like highways and there are trucks or there are vehicles like kinesines, dynines, these are molecular motors, right? And they take the cargo and allow um, the cargo to be transported from one location to another location. Especially for long cells, cells which are having long processes like neurons, this kind of transport is very important for their normal, normal physiology. So inside the neuron, there would be long, long tracks of microtubules. And on top of microtubules, these molecular motors would move. But how would you prove these molecular motors are dynamic in nature? One thing, out of many things, what we can do is to label these kind of molecular motors with fluorescent markers. And after that, the whole axon of the neuron would kind of look like fluorescent because if the movement is happening, all of the axon would be labeled properly, right? Now we still don't know they are dynamic or static. It could be also these cargos are separately distributed all over the axons and that's why they are labeling the whole axon green. But now what we're going to do, we're going to use a high intensity laser to bleach a middle portion of that axon. Now when the laser is removed, we would wait for the recovery profile. If recovery happens, then the process is dynamic. If the recovery doesn't happen, then the process is static. Let's see what happens. So in that region, region if we track over time, then what we would see that many motors from nearby region would try to come in the bleached region and that would recover the fluorescence profile. So as a result, our fluorescence profile would look like this. So initially there was a baseline intensity which dropped dramatically due to photo bleaching and then what happens there is a recovery right and this is only possible because the process is dynamic so in this video we learned how to study membrane fluidity using um using frap we also studied how to use frap technique to study membrane protein dynamics or how to study intracellular transport we also learned how to interpret the frap data in a simple manner right so if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you guys